الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين أبو القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Peace be upon you respected viewers and welcome to Imam Hussein TV channel In today's episode as a matter of fact we want to talk to you about a very serious matter As you may know that the channel is in a very sad situation and it has been off air almost for five days due to financial issues we are in debt to the satellite company uh, around 1.2 million dollar and this matter is really really serious and we have to cooperate together uh, to get this problem urgently solved we have been granted uh, only tw uh, 72 hours of temporary bro broadcast to grab uh, donations and fundraising and that is why we are speaking to you to today tonight uh, to you uh, as you know there are a few English-speaking Shia TV channels across the globe. And Imam Hussein TV is the only channel which has daily five footage, footages uh, from the holy cities of Karbala, Najaf, and Kadhimiya. Now, in the last two years, however, Imam Hussein TV produced uh, various types of shows, including lectures, doc documentaries, live shows, live talk, interviews, and to spread the pure, all of that to, sp uh, to spread out the uh, uh, pure culture of the Ahlul Bayt to you, our respected viewers. Now we tried our best to produce high quality programs with religious content to improve the culture of Shia communities all around the world and support them spiritually and religiously. And this concern, our, our uh, primal go goal was and is to make a global support of all the Shia of Amir al-Mu'min and tonight with us uh, is our respected guest, Sheikh, ya Sheikh Yahya Seymour. We welcome him and to have his word on this uh, issue tonight. Welcome, Sheikh Yahya. Thank you so much for having me, uh, Ustaz Hassan. And it's a privilege to be with you tonight speaking about such an important issue. Uh, what would you, uh, or what message, Sheikh, would you like to convey to the lovers of, of Imam Hussein? Uh, in, in, in regards to the uh, problem that Imam Hussein channel is going it through. Indeed. Uh, I begin in the name of Fatima and her father and her husband and her two sons and the secrets which Allah placed within her. And I wish to address the dear viewers and begin on a very informal note. At the end of the day, we are all brothers and sisters in religion. At the end of the day, we are all lovers of the great Imam al Hussein, the father of a very symbolic foundation of humanity. This great figure who we find right behind us here, as we are currently speaking from Karbala, and we're being filmed right now in the holy city of Karbala. We have the great Imam al Hussein and the great defender of Imam al Hussein, Abul Fadl al Abbas. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon them both. I wish to be informal in my talk to the brothers and sisters out there. Why? Because I believe that this is a talk in which we need to be quite frank. We need to be quite open about. We need to be quite open about the fact that we as human beings, myself included, and myself especially in fact, have numerous shortcomings in our obligations towards Allah Azza wa Jal and in our obligations towards the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salatu was salam. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he addresses the believers in the Quran, he states, or he is told to state rather by Allah Azza wa Jal, say, I do not ask you of anything in reward for this message I have brought you, other than love of my nearest of kin. Namely, that I ask that you love the Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salatu was salam. And yet we find that we live in a world, and I think this is where the chat will get informal, inshallah ta'ala. We must be honest with ourselves, brothers and sisters, those of you who live in the West especially, we do live in a world in which the image of Islam has been tarnished. The image of Islam has been tarnished by what? By the media. The image of Islam has been tarnished by us Muslims. And what do I mean by that? I mean that always we find that the Shia tend to be the silent minority. When I remember when I first converted and I moved to London in I, well, I converted in the year 2002, but I moved to London in the year 2006. I had met with some brothers who were following deviant schools of thought. And initially when they met me, they said, oh, mashallah, we have a convert here. And then they started speaking badly 
about other religions, and then they came down to the Shia. And they said, all these religions are better than the Shia. For us, they said, the Hindu is better than the Shia, and the Christian is better than the Shia. I said, why? They said, because the Shia, you see, brother, he worships 12 gods, he worships 14 gods, he doesn't just worship three gods like the Christian. And of course, this is a slight misunderstanding of both, but I told him that that's not the case, and I happen to be a Shia. The next thing he said to me, and this is what I want the viewer to pay attention to here tonight, he said, what? You're Shia? But you're English? I told him, actually, sir, I'm Scottish, but that's, that's, that's not really the point of what I'm trying to get to here. I said, actually, sir, I'm Scottish, but I don't understand what your point is. How is it that a Scottish person is not Shia? He told me, because Shias, they don't spread their religion. You don't see them calling other people towards understanding Islam through Shiism. They're a silent minority who follow the culture of their forefathers, and no one becomes Shia. At the time, I told him, no, you're wrong. But with experience, I have found that when it comes to an effort to present the truth to other people, it is really us Shia who have the greatest shortcoming in this regard. Yes, there are those Islamic Shi'i channels, one of them being Imam al Hussein, which are doing a great job to try and bring that message to the wider non-Muslim world, yet we do find that unfortunately, in terms of support from the community, these channels are really cut dry by what we have in the community. And alhamdulillah, we do have a rather successful and prominently well-to-do community. Yes, that is not to say that everyone in the community is rich, but every little helps. And everyone who put forward, if all the Shia would give just one dollar to each Islamic Shi'i channel, then each channel would be able to survive throughout the year and produce excellent quality content. Now what makes the channel of Imam al Hussein different? What makes the channel of Imam al Hussein different, I believe, is the place and the location of where we are. Allow me to elaborate upon this more. I've been studying Hausa now for roughly eight years, and yet I would say that I've learned more in the Hausa here in Karbala than I have in my entire life prior to that. Why is that? I came to the holy city of Karbala. Why? When most people choose the holy city of Najaf. You see, Najaf is known for knowledge, as we have that narration, Ana Madina al Ilm wa Aliun Babha. Naturally, any city in which Imam Ali alayhi salatu was salam is matfun, is buried, is going to be the gate towards knowledge. What was it that attracted me to the holy city of Karbala? The holy city of Karbala, you see, is the place where the Prophet's grandson, Imam al Hussein, sacrificed everything in the path of Allah Azzawajal after what can only be described as an attempted calculated genocide on the family of the Prophet. And we find that from the occasion of Karbala, there are too many messages, too many values which can be learnt for us to even recount. If someone were to write entire libraries on the moral lessons that are learnt from Karbala, he would die writing a book every single week and he would never be able to exhaust all the lessons that one can learn from Karbala. From the holy city of Karbala, this disgusting, wretched individual that you see in front of yourself was transformed by the Hausa through the ability to come towards Allah Azzawajal in repentance. I did not come to Karbala with a clean slate, yet we find just like Hor ibn Yazid al-Riyahi, this great individual who at one point was heading towards killing Imam al-Hussein and was one of the very reasons for why the camp of Imam al Hussein were entrenched. He comes forward and repents. He goes to Abu Abdullah alayhi salam. He goes to Imam al Hussein, and we find that Abu Abdullah alayhi salatu was salam, this great, generous, magnificent Imam who sacrificed everything in the way of Allah azza forgives him like that. And Hor becomes one of the companions who are said to be amongst the best of people after the Imams and the Prophets. So we find that this land, this holy city of Karbala, has an effect on people. We are told in the Rawayat that Karbala is a piece of Jannah. Karbala is part of paradise. Yes, I must admit, you are a Karbalai, I live in Karbala. Sometimes when we see the place, we don't really think this is a part of paradise. Rather, we wonder what's happened to the administration of this city. We wonder why it's not right. kept under better conditions. But nonetheless, we're not talking about here the physical state of Karbala as it appears now. We're talking about the reality of Karbala. 
It is part of paradise, according to the Rawayat of Ahlul Bayt. We were told in the Rawayat that the ziyara of Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu was salam is wajib. It is not just mustahab, rather, for those who have the imkaniyyah, for that person who is mustata, who, is, who has the ability to go financially, physically, it is actually wajib for him to do so. And this is in the rawayat. Why is this? It is because the Imams, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu wanted to place a great emphasis on Imam al Hussein, the one who sacrificed everything for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, and as a result, Allah Azza wa Jal gave him everything in his hands. Everything we are told by the ulama is within the hands of Al Hussein alayhi salatu was salam. So if a person would come, no matter what sin they have committed, no matter how filthy the crimes they have done in their life, no matter what desires they have, as long as they are within the benefit for that person. Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu was salam, realizing their sincerity and the sincerity they have in coming to see him would give them that success, would give them that very thing that they ask for. So, what better way to encourage the Shia of today to spread the message of Imam al Hussein, the importance of ziyarah of Imam al Hussein, and even to do ziyarah on behalf of the beloved viewer than to have a channel live from the precincts right next to? within the site of the shrine of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salatu wassalam and the shrine of Imam Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salatu wassalam. Indeed, thank you very much indeed, sir, for this introduction. Now let me uh, to briefly narrate to you the, uh, the story how this channel was established. Now here is a very short story about the uh, establishment of this channel, how it happened to come about. Now, six years ago, a group of Shia activists in Iran met his authority, Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi. May Allah prolong his life. That exactly occurred on the occasion of Eid al-Ghadir. However, this team of activists was working on religious projects in different cities of Iran. Some of these activities uh, were holding the majalis in the, in the months of Muharram and Rajab, each of which you know, uh, hosting around 10,000 people. Handling these, you know, majalis uh, were concerned uh, with handling cultural context for school kids, distributing banners on religious events. Upon hearing that Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi, may Allah prolong his age, informed those people, those activists, that a famous Kuwaiti Salafi leader named Uthman al-Khamis is going to establish a channel in the name of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam to use his po this popular name, this popular holy name, for destroying the image of Shia across the globe. Now, upon that, uh, uh, Sayyid uh, Sadiq al-Shirazi asked those people to stop all of their projects and try to register a TV channel in the name of Imam Hussein. That was briefly the first sparkle of this blessed, you know, channel. And after six months, Imam Hussein TV was, you know, registered and has begun its, you know, programs by 30 minutes per day in Farsi, and then it developed to other languages. Now, if, may, uh, if I may move on to the uh, you know, main points, main goals that this uh, channel you know, try to achieve or tries to achieve. Now, th the first uh, you know, goal, it aims at you know, enlightening humanity with the guidance, as the Sheikh said, the guidance of Imam Hussein, and it takes on the responsibility you know, of preaching and spreading the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam to those thir thirsty truth seeking individuals. Now, the number two goal of this channel is to immunize and fortify the minds of the Shia youth, especially from corrupt satellite channels. And we know that these days that, you know, corrupted people and the, you know, uh, most of the channels are around, the, are around the world are, you know, spending uh, millions of do dollars on trying to, you know, to destroy Islam and to destroy Muslims and to, you know, to defame the reality of Islam and therefore should be an anti-force or an anti-channels against those channels in order to, to clarify what the reality of Islam is and to prove the op opposite of what, the, what those people are trying to you know, spread about Islam mistakenly. Uh, the third goal of the channel is to assist parents, and this is a very important goal that we should stop at and pay more attention to. This channel assists parents in nurturing their children, help young adults by delivering suitable, you know, proper and correct information since they res reside in a wonderful, uh, you know, uh, in a world full of ethical, 
uh, you know, uh, ethical pollution and correction, which uh, subsequently results in a lack of identity, whether they live in the West or in the East. Number four, the uh, goal number four that this channel aims at is to preach the genuine religious religion of Islam to millions of non-Muslims who have not reached the treasures of the Holy Quran. The other goal that this channel aims at is to stand in defense of the Shia entity before those who believe that Shia Muslims are pagans and that the shedding of their and that they shed their uh, their blood and um, is also considered permissible and abuse and insults towards their women and families as a form of worship. However, all these are you know uh, uh, you know false claims that people should you know utterly deny and to stop against. Now we go back to our Sheikh to uh, enlighten us more on the message that the channel of Imam Hussein tried to convey to the humanity. Now let's consider the message of Imam Hussein in the light of this channel. How far does it, you know, take part this channel in problem, in, you know, disseminating the the uh, uh, story of Imam Hussein to the world altogether? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Well, thank you for that introduction to the history of the channel. I think it's very important that the viewers do understand the the purpose for why the channel was established, understand the struggle which the brothers who initially established the channel went through in order to bring us what we have today. In regards to how this history of the channel, the gales of the channel, all relate to the message of Imam Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam, allow me to be frank, brothers and sisters. I understand that there's nothing we appreciate more in this world than frankness. This channel, indeed, we may have shortcomings. You may have found that this channel has shortcomings in terms of the quality of material that they are bringing you occasionally. I want you to remember how difficult it is how for this channel to have brought you a live English feed from the holy city of Karbala. This channel has not before previously asked for donations en masse. And so for the very fact that they have managed to bring you English programs from this city in Karbala, I'm well familiar with the brothers who work here, it's very difficult to find English speakers in this city. Not many foreigners come to live in Karbala. It is in and of itself miraculous, and they've managed to recruit great people like Gustav Hassan, who is a graduate from an English department here in Karbala, right. and was, is one of the better English speakers right. amongst Thank the Karbala students, Thank you from what I've seen. In regards to how the message links to Imam Hussein, I think there are very key things we need to bear in mind here. We need to bear in mind that, brothers and sisters, we are not looking at good times right now. We're not looking at good times, especially for the image of Muslims in the West. What do I mean by that? I mean, if you look at Syria, Syria was a country in which we Shia used to enjoy. And Syria, I'll actually bring it as an example of how we failed as Shia and bring it back to the example of this channel and why we need donations so crucially. Syria, we viewed it, we Western Shia, we viewed it as the ultimate holiday destination. We'd go, we'd enjoy it, we'd do our ziyara, we'd benefit from the relaxed attitude of the people towards Shias, we'd benefit from the stability. And yet we found we never once educated the local people about what Shiism is. What do I mean by that? We created our own Shia ghettos within Syria to such a degree that within neighboring areas to Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salatu was salam, areas such as Babila, you could have local Sunni Syrians who had no idea what Shias believed, and Bil Akis, quite the contrary rather, believed that Shias were mushriks, Shias were pagans, Shias were people who believed that Jibra'il made a mistake and brought the message to Imam Ali alayhi salatu was salam, as opposed to the Holy Prophet. Why? Because of our laziness, because of our lack of ghira. How would you translate the word ghira, Ustaz Hassan? Here, it's really, it doesn't come to my mind right now. Yeah, I, I can't really think of an English word. Our lack of, our lack of sense of decency for this religion. Right. Our, our lack of honor for this religion. By refusing it to spread it to others. So what one finds is we've seen how this world has been corrupted by our lack of action, by our lack of ability to take this information and spread it to the masses. And instead, our religion which is a treasure, it's a chest of treasure, a chest of wisdom, which the human being naturally would incline towards if he were just presented it in an articulate manner, is rejected, we do not spread it, and yet you have people who are sitting, 
they're not sitting on a chest of treasure like we are. We're sitting on a chest of garbage. They're sitting on a chest of a jalakum Allah, a trash heap. They're sitting on a sewer. And yet they are able to sell their message to non-Muslims. Non-Muslims are coming to the cities of Iraq, to the nations, to the states which are taken over by the group known as Daesh. And they're coming to take these areas. This is indeed something shameful and we need to take responsibility for it. That's right, right. Thank you very much indeed. Now, allow me just to mention a very clear hadith that narrated by Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, and then we're going to elaborate on this sacred hadith. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, generosity concerning, you know, uh, encouraging our brothers and sisters to denote for the channel in order to keep it alive. Generosity, Imam Sadiq says, alayhi salam says, generosity is a, abstaining from what is forbidden and being pleased with spending what you legitimately er, earn in, the, in, the, in Allah's way. What does that mean, Shaykh? This narration basically means that generosity is something which is definitely seen as something which is obligatory upon the mu'min. And in fact, the fact that Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu was is placing particular emphasis on it shows that a mu'min should also pay particular emphasis upon it. After all, we know him as Sadiq Ali Muhammad. We call ourselves Ja'fariya because he is the one who established our legal school, and yet we only want to take from him when it comes to the halal and the haram. When it comes to that which is mustahab, we say, no, no that's mustahab, that's too much for us. Yet see, Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salatu was salam is placing such a great emphasis on the need to be generous, on the need to give for the sake of Allah azza wa jal, and yet we do not take from such wisdom. That's right, thank you very much indeed. Now we go to a break and then we come back later. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم to viewers السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته usually as we approach the fest the festive months of رجب شعبان and شهر رمضان spiritually uplifting months where we celebrate the births of various أئمة عليهم السلام including our dear awaited savior in شعبان we're usually filled with joy and happiness and that we'll see celebrations from across the world, across the globe, from those within the madhab. However, on this occasion, it is with dismay and upset and emotion, and to some extent frustration, that we may lose one of the establishments that would have delivered these festivities, these commemorations and these spiritual uplifting programs. And that is, of course, Imam Hussein TV, a channel that you're all familiar with for you're either watching this on the channel right now itself or on the YouTube channel. And to think of what we could be losing, it's, it's, it's worrying because this channel allows us something very unique, which not many other channels allow for, especially for us as English listeners and speakers. And when I say that, let me explain, I mean that this channel is of course based within the holy land of Karbala. It is based there, next to the shrine of Abu Fadl Imam Hussein. You've seen the footage that we've been able to produce from the channel whilst we've been out there. The studios are, direct, are directly located next to the shrines and the views are stunning. And the channel is able to capture the life feeling and, feel, and feedback from the people there and present it to you across the world, be you in the UK, be you in Canada, in the US, in Africa, wherever you are. But unfortunately, this Sha'ban, this Rajab, this Shah Ramadan, and then on to Muharram, to Arba'een, we may no longer have this. We may no longer have Imam Hussein TV to bring to us that live buzz straight from the shrines and cutting edge footage and this is merely down to the simple matter when you think about it in the grand context it's the simple matter of funds I never actually realised to what extent of an impact this channel had until when I first went to Arba'een with Imam Hussein TV not Arba'een just gone but the year before and upon my return the sheer amount of people that were thanking the channel, saying that we've never been able to connect that way to see 
what it's like during Arba'in. Everyone goes and comes back and says, oh, Arba'in's a fantastic experience. The walk, the Mashiach is amazing. But we've never actually been able to see it yet. You guys on the channel, you went out, you captured it live firsthand. Just like many other channels did as well, but Imam Hussain TV had a unique way of doing it. And they were so thankful for it. They said that it felt like they were doing their own ziyara. And equally, during the time of celebrations, similar feelings can be captured. But because of funds, we're going to lose it. We have the people there. We have the talent there. We have the location sorted that can't be matched. And the only thing holding us back is funds. Just funds. So I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, please fund, please help, please donate, because that's never been the nature of this channel. All I'm going to say is what we could miss if this channel goes. The gap that can be, that may be created. And it is with emotion that I say that, because I think this channel has very unique aspects to it, as I've explained. So, in essence, what I think needs to be realised is that this is an opportunity that has been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us. It's another way to serve, it's another way to present our love for the Ahl Bayt alayhim as -salam, in the name of the one who gave the greatest sacrifice, Imam Hussein, and indeed the holy family that he is a part of. And thus that responsibility of ensuring that this channel remains alive is upon all of our shoulders. Be that by donating huge amounts of money, be that by donating huge amounts of time, whatever it is, it has a purpose, and that purpose is to spread this love of the religion of Ali Muhammad. Think about what it's going to be like without being able to see that footage, without being able to go on online and on your TV and being able to see the live coverage of the holy shrines in Karbala across Iraq. There's a gap left. A huge gap. And I say this to you on a personal note. I'm not in Iraq at the moment. I'm in my university room in Birmingham, United Kingdom. And I want to say from here that this, the weeks that I spent with the team out there for the month that I was there, the team members are not worried about losing their jobs. That's not why they want to keep this channel alive. The reason why they want to keep this channel alive is because they feel they have a duty to do so because they feel they have something unique they can offer to the lovers of Allah Muhammad and equally those who wish to board upon this ark, this ark of salvation. And right now the only thing that is holding them back from doing so is the simple matter of funds. So I ask you to do whatever you can, whatever's within your remit. If it's that you can donate a huge amount of money, then please do so. If it's that you're able to donate very little, then do it with sincerity as well, so that Allah has reason to multiply it. If what you're able to do is share this to networks that you feel that could be able to contribute to the assistance of this channel staying alive, then do so. Whatever you can, just know that you've done something. So that when we're asked, what did you do to spread the message of Imam Hussein, we can still point to this and say, I tried to keep a method of communication of love of multimedia alive to the Ahlul Bayt to people across the world, to people who can access it on the internet or receive it on their satellite dish or perhaps see the occasional video and picture on YouTube. We've seen so many people sharing the pictures that we're able to share from the Holy Shrines and equally the videos we're able to produce there. And I think this is the unique part that on every occasion when the city of Karbala especially is buzzing because of perhaps a shahada, a death anniversary, or a mawlid, a birth anniversary, or an important light like Laylatul Qadr, we're able to get an English reporter on the ground in the shrine, in and around the shrine to say, this is the feeling, this is what's going on, look at the buzz around us. And if this channel goes under, we're not going to have that. Yes, there are other channels. And they're fantastic channels, all of them. But the more we have, the merrier. The more we can spread this message. The less we have, the more burden is upon the shoulders of those that are existing. Share the load, and we can go even further. It encourages 
advancement in our methods of spreading this beautiful message. I shan't take up much more of your time, but from your humble servant, Sadiq Damani, I ask you to please do whatever you can to help this channel keep going to help this channel continuing in its message and its aim to spread the message of Ali Muhammad to those across the world. And most importantly, to help this channel in assisting the message of our dear awaited saviour. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our efforts, accept your efforts, accept the efforts of those who are in the control room in Iraq, to accept the efforts of those who are heading up the channel, who are overseeing the operations. May it remain alive for a long time spreading the holy message and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our efforts. Wassalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to our episode. Uh, now I would like to ask you Sheikh one more question if I may. Now we see that the media in the West uh, those people are you know spending a great deal of money in order to, you know, to manipulate the minds of people. They are trying to deviate people from the right path. They are creating, you know, uh, trying to dehumanize people. Now, what is the best way in order to, uh, you know, to stop those people from doing this? To lead by example. The best way in order to combat such a campaign is for Muslims to get involved in media themselves to have their own representation within the media and to have a representation on the ground front. What I mean by that is naturally your average Joe Bloggs, your average Tim who comes from a village in London, a village in England or comes from a village in Scotland or Wales or even Ireland or anywhere else. Someone who comes from a state in America where there are no Muslims. All he hears in the media is terrorism dash, terrorism dash, suicide bomber beheader, cartoonist getting killed in France. So this is the image he has of Islam. Then he turns on the TV, he's going to look for the nearest Muslim channel on. He's probably going to see a radical Wahhabi channel, because they have so many in the English language, in which the Wahhabi is speaking badly about non-Muslims. So he's going to see all this and he's going to think, oh, so everything they're saying about Muslims is true. Now imagine, imagine this person be educated a little more. Imagine we were able to tell this person, look, you are a victim of extremism in the name of Islam. Do you know who the first individual to be a victim of extremism in the name of Islam was? Well, actually it wasn't Imam Hussein, it was actually Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salatu wasalam. But, for the, sake of for the sake of analogy, Imam Hussein is one of the first individuals to have been a victim of extremism in the name of Islam and yet he is the grandson of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Imagine how powerful a symbol this would be for that non-Muslim to hear this. This is a corruption of Islam and this corruption of Islam did not just fight against the so-called non-Muslim world but even fought against the representatives of God on earth. It fought against the very household of the Prophet and is destroying everyone including the household of the Messenger of Allah regardless of faith, race, creed, nationality or any of these accidental factors. This corruption of Islam is something that can only be combated by spreading the truth about Islam, by spreading the true Islam, the real Islam, the original Muhammadan Islam, the original Islam of Ali Muhammad. Right, so you mean Shaykh that there is no you know, connection between Islam and what those terrorist uh, people are doing out there? Absolutely not. Sure, definitely. Now, now let's consider another hadith by Imam Sadiq. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says on the authority of the Prophet uh, of Islam, Muhammad, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, upon his pure family. He says, generosity is a tree rooted in heaven with its branches hanging over the earth. Whoever grabs one of those branches will climb up to heaven. Now, Shaykh, what does that mean? if you elaborate more on this hadith by Prophet. And now, first of all, let's go to Shaykh Fayyad to take the call. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh Fayyad. Wa alaikum, salam wa rahmatullah. How are you? Thank you for being us, uh, with us in this episode. My pleasure. Uh, 
Uh, Sheikh Fayyad, what, would you, what message would you deliver to the uh, people out there? Uh, and you know that uh, Imam Hussein TV channel is, is going through a very you know, difficult financial you know, crisis these days. What message yeah. would you deliver to those people on this matter? Uh, obviously, the channel is going through quite a dire situation these days. And uh, everyone needs to recognize that what all of these channels are trying to do, specifically Imam Hussein TV using the name and the banner, of Imam Hussein alayhi salam is trying to present the teachings of the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salatu wa salam across the entire world. And this in itself is a noble task. I myself have uh, been on Imam Hussein TV and oftentimes when I travel to visit different cities and different communities, people, they come up to me and they tell me about the amount that they benefited from the channel. Um, I've spoken to some people who um, they do not have access to going to a mosque uh, very often, thus they rely on Imam Hussein TV to provide them that insight. And with the pictures coming directly live from the holy city of Karbala, the holiest land that we have, the city of Abi Abdullah and Hussein, the city of Abu Fadl Abbas, alayhi masul salatu wasalam, people, they attach their hearts to this channel because of what it stands for, meaning it stands for Imam Hussein, it stands for Karbala. And everything that Imam Hussein and everything that Karbara stand for is that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need the entire uh, community of ours, the lovers of the Ahl al to do their best to try to give back toward this cause because this cause is giving toward the cause of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. If we want to register ourselves amongst the supporters, amongst the companions of Imam Hussein, then one of those ways to link ourselves with anything that attaches itself or anything that attaches ourselves to Imam Hussain and perhaps nothing is more uh, valuable than um, being at the service of a channel that has been able to do this in so many different households in so many different communities and affected so many individuals' lives um, I recall speaking with some of the uh, brothers when I was uh, in Kabbara at the Imam Hussein TV channel, those who work with them, and they went and they told me about how uh, women would give their um, dowry that they received for their, from their wedding in terms of jewelry and so on and so forth, and the donation toward the channel because of what impact that it had toward their lives. So imagine all of those people who don't have anything to give. We need those who are able to give, those who are uh, financially well off, those who can give even a little bit in the way of Imam Hussein TV, they should certainly make their uh, best effort in doing so. Because, like I said, the potential that it has to change people's hearts, to change people's souls, to bring them toward the path of Abi Abdullah and Hussein alayhi salatu is uh, really, really tremendous. So I urge, and I remind myself firstly, and I urge all of the mu'mineen uh, across the world to uh, give toward this great cause and register their, themselves on the um, ark on the ship of Abi Abdullah and Hussein alayhi salatu wa salam of course the narration states in Hussein misbah al huda wa safinat al najat that Imam Hussein is the lantern of guidance and the ship of salvation if we want salvation we need to link ourselves to Imam Hussein alayhi salam the man he went to Imam al-Sadiq and he said oh Imam um, after the he said, he said, oh, Imam, aren't you guys all, aren't you, all of you do the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt, aren't you guys all the ships to salvation? Imam al responds toward the companion, yes, what I can in the Safina can sustain, awsa'a wa but the ship of Imam al Hussein is the most spacious and is the quickest way, the quickest means to get toward the salvation. So again, we need to do our best to board on the ship of Abi Abdullah al Hussein by supporting this channel by supporting this cause, giving, doing whatever that we can to help this message of Imam Hussein reach the entire world, let people's eyes on a daily basis be witness to the pictures from the Blessed Shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam, and his brother Abu Fadl Abbas. And really, um, this will um, not only do a good service toward people across the world, but this will certainly be a means for us to receive the intercession of Imam Hussein in this life, in the Barzakh, in the next life, inshallah.
thank you very much indeed, uh, Sheikh Fayyad Jafar. We highly appreciate your call, and it's highly appreciated. Thank you very much indeed, and ma'asalama. Now, back to you, Sheikh Yahya. Uh, we were talking about the hadith of Prophet, that generosity is a tree rooted in. Now, let's move on to another hadith by Imam Calvin. Imam Calvin said, how bad it is for someone to be asked for something, and he says no. What does that suppose say on, on, on the level of generosity? Of course, this is a reflection of the fact that the pure Imams, the Imams of Ali Muhammad, who were the most generous individuals known in the history of mankind, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon them all, were trying to educate their Shia. They were trying to raise their Shia with a culture which taught us that, it's, yes, it's difficult. Things are very difficult. Sometimes when we earn our money and we see people who do not earn money, they do not have jobs, we see that they are not doing the same path that we are upon, we have this almost devilish tendency within ourselves to think, why should I give you money? I earned this. This is my right. Why should I part with it? And in fact, we find that shaitan, he comes and he makes parting with things that we have, one of the more difficult things ever. The Ahlul Bayt والسلام, would try and educate us, try and raise us with this culture of not only giving a simple amount, but also giving that which we would want to be given ourselves. So we find that the Imams, and I'm not suggesting everyone goes around doing this, but rather they try to show us the best of morality. How so? If the Imam had five garments of clothing, and say one of them was particularly high quality, the other four were substandard quality. And someone would ask him for clothing. Had that been any of us, we would have given away one of the four substandard quality of clothing. Yet the Imam would have given away the highest quality to that other person. Why? Because he wanted to educate us that when you give, you should give generously. You should give to the best of your ability. And when you do so, you are acting in the way that Allah Azzawajal would want you to. What do I mean by that? Allah Azzawajal, we describe him with his names and attributes. And of course, when we imagine these names and attributes, we are only describing what he is not. He is described as generous. And we are told that we should emulate Allah Azzawajal in all of his attributes of action. Specifically, his attributes of action which do not involve things like, of course, we are told an exception is Allah is mutakabbar, and we should not be those who are arrogant. Right, right. But when it comes to sifat like generosity, when it comes to sifat like merciful, we are meant to emulate Allah Azzawajal in this particular attribute. Thank you very much indeed. No problem. Our respective viewers, if you are really interested in denoting, we have different types of, of denotion methods. First of all, many transfer companies around the world, Karbala, Iraq, made out of Raouf Saeed Shams, and the number is shown right at the bottom of the screen. You, you can do that uh, via pay, PayPal and uh, Western or the Western Union made out of Raouf Saeed Shams Karbala and you have the number uh, shown at the bottom of the screen as well. Or bank account, Bank of America um, network account and then also all of these uh, methods of denotion are visible at the bottom of the screen. Or via contacting our ambassadors, Mustafa uh, Ikhwan in the U.S. and the number is also shown at the bottom of the screen or Hussein Ramsey uh, Mustafa Khaqan USA and Akhawan and the number is uh, that's in the UK uh, 1571336 or our ambassador in Canada Hussein Ramsey uh, and the number is 1519 uh, Hussein Romethi sorry for uh, mispronunciation Hussein Romethi uh, our ambassador in Canada, and the number is 15195673732. Or our ambassador, Sayyid Ali Nawab in the UK, and the number is also 447916610806. Or our ambassador, Sayyid uh, Ashuri in Germany, Said Ashuri in Germany, sorry, uh, and the number is also uh, 49163218363. Eight, five. Or you can contact for more information, you call us on this number, 7719611191. Uh, uh, one, 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 nine, nine. Now let's move on to a short account of carrying on the Islamic mission of Imam Hussein, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him. Let me shortly relate this to you. 
Throughout history, our world has continued to be plagued with ultimate battle of good versus evil, this battle or the compete between uh, good and evil. A constant collision among those who possess the qualities of being righteous, being virtuous, being uh, and perform good deeds for the sake of pleasing Allah the Almighty against those who are evil, wicked, and only aim to carry out harmful acts against Allah's command. Never has this type of comparison, comparison been as prevalent as during the imamate of, of our beloved Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Now in an effort to save Islam and guide fellow Muslims to the right path, Imam Hussein alayhi salam made the ultimate sacrifice that nobody had ever made that sacrifice. He, meaning Imam Hussein, along with his family and uh, you know a, a, a handful of faithful companions of his, were savage, uh, savagely tortured and slain by the tyrant Yazid, the son of Muawiyah, Allah's curses be upon them, whose sole purpose was to rule the Muslim empire throughout any means necessary, including uh, horrendous acts of violence, massacres, propaganda, and corruption, and whatsoever. Now, year after year, the tragedy of Karbala, however, is recounted to us, making our grief fresh and softening our hearts as we continue to mourn the loss of our Prophet's beloved family. Allah's blessings and peace be upon them all. However, what we often lose sight of is that the, in addition to our tears, Imam Hussein, as well as the Imam of our time, are counting on our actions, and this is very important. Now, the horrid crimes and injustices that took place in the era of Imam Hussein continued to remain rampant in today's life. Innocent victims, including children all over the world, in countries like Iraq, Syria, Bahrain, and Pakistan, are being viciously murdered simply for being lovers of the Ahlul Bayt and proclaiming they are Shia simply for that purpose. Scholars are being you know, attacked and killed for preaching the truth on the pulpit and spreading the message of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. As we hear about such atrocities and view unimaginable images in the media, we have a responsibility, a very, very big responsibility lies upon, upon us to stand up for the true values of our religion and to speak out against this type of tyranny, this type of corruption. Now Indian political, however, to mention this very important, Indian political and their spiritual leader Mahatma Gandhi in this concern once he said, I learned from Imam Hussein how to achieve victory while being oppressed. We may not have the same status as the Ahlul Bayt salam, but we have them as our, you know, our models in life. If we continue to, sur to survive, or uh, if we continue, sorry, to, sur to strive for the truth and unite against the injustices of our time, we will achieve the mission of carrying on Imam Hussein's mes message that was deeply humanitarian message. Now we go to London to take a phone call from uh, Sheikh uh, Sayyid Ali Khalkhali. Assalamu alaikum Sayyid Ali uh, Khalkhali and welcome to Imam Hussein TV channel and with us in, in the studio. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum to my dear uh, How are you brothers, Sheikh? How are you Sayyid? May Allah bless you all. Uh, the viewers are home and uh, may Allah continue to have this blessing of watching uh, Imam Hussein TV. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We, we pray for you to come here as soon as possible. Sayyid Ali, what message, if I may, would you like to deliver to the people out there, to the Shia community in particular, uh, as long as we know that the uh, Imam Hussein TV channels are, you know, uh, going through a very difficult financial crisis. What is your message to those people uh, in this regard? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the opportunity and the platform to spread the message of the Qur'an and the Ahlul Bayt to various parts of the world. And this in itself is a blessing that we have been given this honor to spread the message of the Ahlul Bayt and the Qur'an via Imam Hussein TV. And I personally you know of many great 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 stories and experiences of those viewers who have been watching Imam Hussein TV from very far parts of the world who wish to be in fact under the shrine of Imam Hussein 
by the shrine of Hazrat uh, Abdul Fadl Abbas, and because of the distance, they yearn to be there. Now, Imam Hussein TV has given the uh, opportunity for us to do the ziyara, for us to recite the 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 blessed prayers and the blessed supplications and the blessed salutations to the uh, blessed Imam and. Furthermore, we get the opportunity to do this on the other channel to see the great message of Imam Hussein. The message that Imam Hussein stood for truth. Imam Hussein stood against injustice. Imam Hussein stood for the oppressed. And it's important for us to continue to spread the message of Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein's name is the name that we all wish to understand for when we know and learn from the life of Imam Hussain, not just from the death and the martyrdom of Imam Hussain and Islam, but when we see and learn from his life, many people from different parts of the world, they are attracted towards the beautiful being, towards the blessed life, towards the blessed and the blessed divine uh, religion of Islam and the path of the Ahl Bayt and the path of the Quran. So it is very important if we can continue to have this platform, the Imam Hussein TV. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we pray that this opportunity continues to exist. And second, we ask the dear viewers to help as much as they can and to their best ability, to the best, uh, to their best that we can have Imam Hussain TV spreading its message, spreading its wings throughout the world, inshallah. Thank you very much indeed, Sayyid Ali Khalkhali was with us from London. Highly appreciate your word. Now we come back to you, Sheikh Yahya. Again, on the on the matter of generosity. If we could yes. take a step back from narrations. And just come to a few thoughts that I had on my mind based on the short introduction you gave to why the message of Imam Hussein is so important. One of the things you mentioned that particularly brought a memory to my mind was you mentioned how people were being persecuted all over the world for nothing more than being Shia. Right. People are being killed all over the world for nothing more than the fact that they profess a love for the Ahlul Bayt and a rejection of the enemies of the Ahlul Bayt. Nothing greater comes to my mind when I thought of what you said than the martyrdom of the great martyr, the scholar al Allama Sheikh Hassan al shahata the Egyptian convert to Shiism who was one of the great sheikhs or ulama of one of the non-Shi'i sects in Egypt. He was a sheikh of Al-Azhar University who became Shia. Some of the brothers remember the brutal, tragic circumstances surrounding the death of the great martyr Sheikh Hassan al-Shahata. And I remember particularly that when we saw the video, Sheikh Hassan al-Shahata was being dragged down the streets of Egypt without his clothes on. He had been mobbed in an Egyptian village by over 2,000 young men who stormed his house on the day of the birthday of Imam Sahib al-Asri was Zaman. May Allah hasten his reappearance. And I remember many of us were mortified by these brutal images. Of course, some have indeed pointed out that Sheikh Hassan was involved in a form of rhetoric which many people may not, have, may not have agreed with. I'd like to point out to such people that they should not judge the context of Sheikh Hassan. Sheikh Hassan was someone that had been calling to what he believed was deviation for the vast majority of his life. And he felt he was calling towards the enemies of Imam Hussein only to be guided by Imam Hussein. So he felt guilty for this, and his method was very much a reaction to that guilt he felt. Yet what I wanted to focus upon here is the fact that when those individuals, those villagers were interviewed and asked, why did you kill Hassan Shahata? They didn't say, because he's a Shia and he loves Imam Hussein. They said, because he's a Shia, and we hear on our TV channels that Shias go around committing acts of indecency between men and women of 
a collective nature. Now the adults who are listening to us will of course understand what I mean by that. They used different terms, I'm trying to gloss over them for any young audience who are watching who I don't want to understand these terms. So the fact that people in this village of Egypt could misunderstand what Shiism stands for to such a degree that they felt that Shiism was just a bunch of deviant family practices shows that we have truly failed in articulating what the true message of Yahl al-Bayt is. Now what you saw leading up to Sheikh Hassan being killed was the fact that channels like the, the two main Wahhabi channels, one of them begins with a W, one of them begins with an S for those of you who watch Middle Eastern satellite channels. They were leading the front because both were based in Egypt and both were going around saying you have this Shia Hassan Shahata, why is he still alive? And you found that it was the media over a year before the death, the martyrdom of Sheikh Hassan al-Shahata, which led for his martyrdom to come about by spreading this misinformation about Shiism within Egypt. Before the opening of Qanat Safa, I'm going to name the channel, which is headed by people like Uthman al-Khamis, who was mentioned previously, no one had this negative impression of Shiism in Egypt. Yet you found when you had a channel dedicated to just bashing Shiism 24-7, the natural result, the natural conclusion of it is that Shia blood is going to be spilt in Egypt because they're taught a bunch of lies as to what Shias believed. Where were the Shia channels educating the Egyptians as to what Shiism was? Same thing in the UK. In the UK, where I'm from, the Shia is very much the enemy on two fronts. Why? Because the non-Muslim views him as your typical Muslim. He believes that he supports Daesh. So your average Shia is going to be treated just like a normal Muslim will be. They think he's a Wahhabi just like the rest, and he's going to be persecuted from that front. So you run to your brothers expecting unity, and no, you don't get unity from them because they're watching anti-Shia channels and think you're a non-Muslim. So the Shia finds himself stuck with no supporters. Why? Because he has been too lazy, too inactive to think about spreading his religion through either supporting those who do it or making an active role himself. More importantly, I thought I'd mention one more thing that, I, that had come to my mind during the duration of the show, which is that we find ourselves again speaking about Imam al Hussein. What is it that Imam al Hussein is famous for? Imam al Hussein is famous for sacrifice. He's famous for giving that which was dear to him. Likewise, we find that the previous Anbiya, the previous prophets who came to visit the holy city of Karbala, when they came to visit the holy city of Karbala decades, centuries before the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, Allah Azza wa Jal always gave them a sign in the form of an injury, in the form of blood being spilt from their bodies in order to educate them that this is a place where the grandson, the master of martyrs of the last prophet will be martyred. And in doing such, their blood shared with the blood of Abu Abdullah in the land of Karbala. So these great prophets, they would give their blood for this land of Karbala to share within the sacrifice of Abu Abdullah. They would give physically from their bodies for this. And yet we're unwilling to sacrifice a few pennies from our pockets. We're unwilling to sacrifice a few notes from our checkbooks. That's right. Thank you very much indeed, Sheikh, for being with us. We highly appreciate your presence. This is the end of today's episode. We ask Allah the Almighty to grant us with success and we indeed seek your honorable help as well and support in this channel. Thank you very much indeed for being us. Until we meet again, goodbye.